In the last video, we showed how to establish the stress and stiffness equations for the rod. Now we're going to go through the same example, but with real numbers. We substitute the real numbers for material, length, and area. First, we're going to find stress the easy way. Stress, if you remember from the last video, is just force over area. Putting the numbers in, we get 221 megapascals. Now that was pretty easy, and in fact that's job done. It's a very basic stress analysis. However, we can now try the hard way. We establish first the equivalent axial spring stiffness, and then the displacement. From the previous video, stiffness is Ea over L. Displacement is found by inverting the stiffness and multiplying by the load and we get 0.316 millimeters. Now we're not finished yet. We next calculate the strain. The strain is the change in length over the original length and is 1.05 millistrain. Finally, we know the stress-strain relationship through Young's modulus, and so we can solve for stress. We get the same value as before. Now that was hard work. Now why on earth would we want to find stress that way? It seems a very complicated way, and we went through these steps just to achieve the stress. We could have done it just in one shot, as before. While there is a reason for that, here we are just calculating one degree of freedom, we just have to solve for U2. We want to expand this method to many, many degrees of freedom. Imagine another rod component modeled with solid elements. There might be 10,000 degrees of freedom here, So instead of p equals k times u, where we're solving for single scalar numbers, we want to solve for a system of equations. The stiffness matrix is going to be a big matrix representing the full FEA model. If we have 10,000 degrees of freedom, then n is 10,000. So the vectors in the matrix fill out like this. The complete structural stiffness is assembled and we solve for 10,000 unknown degrees of freedom. A key point here is that we fundamentally solve for displacements. We then back substitute and solve for the stresses. These are back calculated in the two-step process. Approximations and errors can creep into the stress calculations because of this. This is a major weakness in the FEA method, and we'll explore that in later videos. And now we have our usual spot quiz. So the first question is, does a deflection of 0.316 millimeters seem like a reasonable deflection in a rod this size? Or perhaps it should be 0.3160 to the minus three, or 0.316 meters. Is that more likely? Next question, does the strain have any real units? Then finally, the material is steel. Knowing this, is the stress that we're predicting a reasonable design value? In the next video, we're going to imagine we are software developers. And we're going to look at how we might define the equation for a rod stiffness. We're looking at the sign convention and the layout of that. And so we'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching.